In this video, we're going to talk about some pretty interesting stuff. We're going to talk about the basics of integration. So, the integral of a function is also known as the antiderivative is basically just the opposite of a derivative. It's going backwards from a derivative. So, if you look back at our old power rule, we know that let's say we're given a function x to the power of r. We know that the derivative f prime at x is equal to r to the times x to the power of r minus 1. So we reduce the exponent. So we multiply the exponent by x and then we reduce the exponent. So let's say for instance now that we're given a function f at x, f at x is equal to x to the power of 3. Okay, we know that f prime at x, f prime at x from our power rule is equal to 3x squared. Okay, so now if you wanted to go from 3x squared back to x cubed, we would take what's called the integral of it or the antiderivative and that should, that'll give us uh, uh, x cubed sort of, and I'll, I'll get back to that in just a moment. So essentially, as a rule, if a function f at x, okay, we're given a function f at x is equal to x to the power of r, then the integral, which we write this way, okay, the integral of f at x is equal to x to the power of r plus 1 divided by r plus 1. This is the reverse power rule. Okay, so this is the expression you'd use. Well, sort of, and I'll come back to that in just a second. But in the meantime, let's uh, push on here. So now let's assume that we have another function h at x. Okay, we'll call it, uh, we'll, we'll say that f at x Okay, or the derivative of this function here, f prime at x, okay, we'll give it a new name, we'll call it h at x. Okay, and now we want to go from h at x back to um, f at x, okay, so that means we're going to take the integral of h at x. So the way we would write it is h at x, okay, is equal to 3x squared then the integral of h at x, okay, the antiderivative of h at x, dx, okay, dx, this is how we would write it. Forgot to include the dx here, but there should be a dx there, okay. The integral of h at x dx is going to be equal to, we're going to use our reverse power rule here. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take 3x squared plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. So what happens when we simplify this is that we get 3x cubed over 3 and these 3's cancel out. But the, and so, as a result, we get x cubed. But there's one more bit to it. We have to add a constant, plus c. So that means this right here will be plus c. So now the question becomes, why do we have to add a plus c to it? Well, let's take a look at a couple of examples. Let's say that we have a function we'll call g at x. g at x is equal to x cubed plus 1. And then we'll get another function here we'll call y at x. y at x is equal to x cubed minus 5. And then we'll do one more function. We'll call it m at x is equal to 
x cubed minus 100,000. And now what we want to do is we want to take the derivatives of each. So let's take the let's go ahead and take the derivative. So g prime at x is just going to be equal to x cubed. And then in this scenario here, y prime get the right color. Y, y prime at x is also going to be equal to 3x. Oh, one second, I should probably correct this. That is not right here. The derivative should be 3x, not x cubed. 3x. Getting a little ahead of myself here. 3x squared. 3x squared. And then we have 3x squared here because the 5 is a constant, it reduces to 0. The 1 is a constant, it also reduces to 0. And then over here, we have m prime at x, which will also equal 3x squared. Again, the 100,000 is a constant, and it reduces to 0. So what if we wanted to go back now? We wanted to take the integral of... Uh, g at x, okay, so in theory it should give us this, uh, should give us, sorry, if we want to take the integral of g prime at x in theory, or by, not in theory, but by intuition, we would think that it would give us x cubed plus 1 by intuition. So if we did that and took the integral of g prime at x, prime at x, dx, what would that give us? Well, we would raise the exponent to 3. So doing our, um, our power rule again. Okay, so that would give us, it would just take us back to x cubed as, we, as it happened back here. Now, as you can see here, there's nothing on this side. There's a 0, and we have no idea what that zero goes to, what that zero goes back to. So that's why I put a plus C here. And so it's gonna be the same thing over here, right? If we wanna get the integral of y at x dx, well, we know that this term here, the three x squared, the exponent goes to three, and then the three cancels out with the three that would be down here. But then, what about this term, this next term here? What happens to that? Well, we have no idea what that next term, what that zero raises to, what that zero goes back to. So that's why you write plus c here. And then it's, again, it's the same thing over here. The integral of m at x dx is equal to x cubed plus c. Right. And this should be a plus as well, not a minus. Plus c. Okay, some constant. Because as you can see here, that when we go back from the integral, from the derivative back to the regular function, we lose this constant. Okay, we don't know what it is anymore. So there's no way of telling what the constant is unless we're given some extra information. So now let's go down here. So now let's say the, the, the question was to find the integral of, we'll say, g at x here, okay, g at x, and it is given that the, that the, uh, excuse me one second here. So yes, we want to find g at x, and we're given some extra information. So let's say we want to find g prime at x, Okay, actually, yeah, g prime at x. So g at x is equal to, so I should probably stay consistent with the colors here. g at x is equal to the integral of g prime at x dx 
and we're given some extra information where g at 1 is equal to 2. Okay, so we're asked to find the integral of g at x, or sorry, yes, uh, of uh, g prime at x, where g is g at 1 is equal to 2. Well, what we do is, as you can see here, we've already done this computation here. Okay, so we can go ahead and write that this is equal to x cubed plus c. And now what we can do is we can use this information to figure out what c is. So in this case, uh, g at 1 is going to be 2. So we'll put, this, put a line here. 2 is equal to, okay, x. In this case, x is 1. So x cubed plus c. Right? And then we have, so 1 cubed is just 1. And now we can bring this one over by subtracting one from both sides. And as we can see, c is just equal to 1. So that means that when we write the final answer, g at x, we'll get x cubed plus okay, c, which is equal to 1. Okay, And so as you can see here, the only way to go back to the original function is if you're given some extra information here like this. Okay, and then the same, it would be the same thing too for given some extra information for, you know, this function or this one. Uh, it really all depends on what extra information you are given. So to summarize, we have the integral or the expression for an integral. We like to use the symbol capital F. Okay, so capital F, okay, at X. This is the symbol for an integral, is equal to f at x dx. And in the case where you have uh, a polynomial, so if, for example, f at x takes the form x to the power of r, then we have uh, f of x is equal to x to the power of r plus 1 over r plus 1 plus c 